Trustee Shaw. May I have a second? Uh, Raymond. Uh, Raymond, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shaw, uh, Shaw. Raymond. 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 Okay, sorry. Second by Trustee Baskin. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Pardon? I'm going to abstain. Oh, yes, you're going to abstain because you weren't here. Okay. Okay, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of 3-15-22? These are the- I'll make that motion. You'll make the motion, trust, uh, trust the motion made by Trustee Baskin. May I have a second, please? Second. Second, uh, not. <laughs> second by Trustee Cormos. Uh, any questions or comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 And also, uh, Bernadette is abstaining. Okay, I have some, I have several um, mayor announcements, so please uh, bear with me. Okay, first of all, as you can see, if you have been driving by, Ricketts is substantially the demolishing of Ricketts dry cleaning is substantially completed. Once it is cleared, um, there will be a completion report. All of this stuff, including uh, all of this material, including uh, fact sheets and whatever will be placed on our website. website. Um, there is funding called aid funding, AIM, excuse me, which is used, it's the um, New York State funding that is used for water and sewer, public works, fire, ambulances, a lot of things, different things used by municipalities. It's aid for municipalities. Um, the New York Conference of Mayors is, has been asking for a long time for an adjustment in the amount of AIM funding. And this year they're asking for an increase of 210 million in AIM funding to its aid to municipalities. Um, there hasn't been an increase in the amount of AIM funding for 13 years. Um, the Senate is proposing 210 million. The Assembly is proposing 150 million. 
NICOM is proposing the 210. Um, I have been asked and I have signed on to a letter um, through the New York Conference of Mayors to urge the governor to um, come together with the Senate and Assembly and come and come together on a, on a, on a three-way deal to accept um, an increase in AIM funding. Hopefully it will be the 210 million um, that uh, the Senate um, and NICOM are asking for, but we'll see about that. But just so you know, I have signed on to that letter. Um, Boston Spa has been recognized for the third year in a row as a, a, a tree city. Um, and um, that's good news. Um, I also want to announce that there will be the closing of Bath Street this coming Saturday. Uh, Chief Crow has asked me to mention this. Uh, closing of Bath Street this Saturday. Um, all day so that the fire, uh, the fire department can do training at the Angelica site. So just be advised, this is training on, you know, how to deal with, there's gonna be a lot of smoke um, and, um, you know, an important training exercise. Uh, Chief Fasher advises me that all the neighbors have been notified, but so I'm, um, notifying the public and we will also notify the uh, police that the uh, Bath Street will be closed all day this coming Saturday for that uh, important exercise. All right, one of the, let me go take that last. I wanted to um, talk about, it has come up a number of times in the past about the Tedesco grant. And I just want to tell people where we are on that. This is a hundred thousand dollar grant, which originally this goes so far back. Um, it goes back as far as uh, sometime in 2020 when we thought we were going, or even before that, when we thought we were getting this grant and it was going to be used for the pool. And then it turned out that repairing the pool um, was going to cost more. And then we went through this whole thing. There are there are, on the Tedesco grant. There are you know a number of emails from uh, Mayor Woolbright saying that you know he had come to the conclusion that the pool didn't need to be fixed. So, but except it didn't need to be totally redone. Um, so we decided to get a change in the scope of work, and we wanted to do we wanted to get a change in the scope of work to repair a number of buildings. And long story long, <laughs> um, it went forward to try and get a change of scope so that we could do changes to Village Hall. Um, the windows and facade, the vault, which is under the, under the street, the front in, in front of the building, and also um, the retaining wall, which is on the side. Um, that bid came in at over seven hundred thousand dollars. So, but still, so so we had to change the scope of work again. Um, and but we are still looking to get that hundred thousand dollars. There has been a nu numerous emails that have gone back and forth between DASME, the dormitory authority of the state of New York, who is responsible for all structures, grants, and grants um, usually in the state for, for structures is the grantor, if, you're, if you will, but it was coming through, the sponsor was Senator Tedesco, or is Senator Tedesco, and also it has to, he has to go through all Senate finance. So what has been transpiring the last several months is going back and forth, and there has been a lot of, um, how shall I say this going on about um, who's responsible um, and how we get the scope changed and how we actually get the money. Um, as of today, um, to, um, Jennifer Moskowitz, who has been uh, tracking this, this event, has filed paperwork with somebody within, with the Jonathan Pirro, I believe, in Senator Tedesco's mm -hmm. office to try and 
uh, break this loose, if you will, from uh, Senate finance and move it forward. So that is, and as of two o'clock this afternoon, that is the last step that has been taken. And I have, but that's up to the date knowledge about where we are with um, that grant. We are still hoping that um, we will get that money and it will be used for the purpose that it was intended. Uh, and a lot of this has involved our change in the scope, which apparently DASME doesn't necessarily have a problem with, but which has been just caught up in, I guess, trying to break it, trying to break it loose. Okay, but it is not through a lack of trying. And this is, this is the file on the Tedesco grant. Okay, so, um, and I won't bore you by reading all of the emails back and forth, but um, that's where we are on that. Two other things that are going to come up for um, approval, um, I want to address. Um, and one of them is the pedestrian and bicycle master plan. This is, um, we will read a resolution, and this is the final approval for the, um, for the, for this uh, project work, which is through um, <coughs> CDTA. I want to make, make it, this is very similar to approving of this is saying that we're going to use this diet, this um, document as guidance, as reference, okay? Similar to, similarly, I can never, as we do with the economic development plan of 2020. Uh, a matter of fact, if you read another thing that we're going to um, be looking at tonight, the comprehensive plan um, steering committee consulting contract, they talk about using the economic development plan, the pedestrian and bicycle master plan, the um, mayor's ad hoc um, zoning uh, report, zoning committee report, that all of those things are being used as uh, guidance, as reference. So I want people to understand that these are, when we adopt this tonight, we are not approving funding. We are not approving all the projects. We are not funding all the projects. Every single thing that is done under the pedestrian and bicycle master plan is going to have to come before the board of trustees to be approved. We are just approving this because it's something that we got. It, it provides us a, a grant that was very useful. One of the things that I think is probably the most useful is as part of this grant, we did a, we did a sidewalk survey and figured out where our problem sidewalks are throughout the village. I mean, some people sitting in this room did that survey with me as did a number of other people who were involved in surveying our sidewalks. So that is, that is what the pedestrian and bicycle master plan is. It is on the website. You can see the final report, but please understand that we are adopting it as a guide and as a reference, but we are not by virtue of what we are doing tonight going to approve all projects. We're not approving funding for it. So just please understand that. Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about that we are going, uh, that we're going to be talking about this evening in a, um, we're going to act upon is the appointment of Jeff Gores as the acting superintendent of public works. This is a provisional um, um, appointment and I just want to give you some of the background on this. This has been, this is a job, this is this original originated um, with um, Jeff um, needing uh, more help with uh, work within the Department of Public Works. It is something that uh, Mayor Woolwright uh, supported and tried to move forward. Unfortunately, what was happening was Jeff is currently the working supervisor for the Department of Public Works. So what was happening is um, Mayor Woolbright and whatever, and was looking to find a or establish a deputy working supervisor. 
that term does not exist in the whole civil service uh, world, if you will. All of these appointments, all of these jobs have to be have to exist in public in the, with uh, in civil service, and they have to be approved the positions. So I started to get involved in this, and I found out a couple of things. Number one, that um, the only uh, ent village or entity that does not have a superintendent of public works in Saratoga County is Balsam Spa and Corinth. Okay, so in all other municipalities, there, the superintendent of public works existed. The second thing that I found out is that, well, I found out that there's no such thing and cannot be any such thing as a deputy working supervisor. Um, the other thing that I found out in the course of doing this is that uh, Jeff Gores has been acting as the deputy, uh, as the superintendent of public works for many years. He's been doing things above and beyond the job description of a working supervisor. So um, knowing that, I we have established the position of superintendent of public works, and we will appoint um, Jeff Gorey's this evening as a um, acting superintendent of public works. It's a provisional appointment until he, at such point, uh, takes an exam and passes it. Um, and the last thing I want to say is that the job title of working supervisor will then be open for, you know, we will solicit for people to uh, apply for that job. Um, and I will finally say that the that this is covered uh, within the budget. In other words, there has been a laborer position open within the budget uh, all this year, and we are definitely have the funds and are adding funds to uh, make, bring that labor position up to a, a working supervisor title. It really doesn't take very much because when you add the benefits and let it, uh, to the um, benefits to the salary of the, of the working supervisor, there really isn't much difference between the labor position financially and the working supervisor uh, position. So I wanted to give you the background on that because, um, and to let you know that that um, position will be posted and that people, anybody currently working at the Department of Public Works or other people can be looking into that, um, you know, may apply to that job. And also that um, all of this paperwork, you know, establishing the position um, all of it has been cleared through um, Saratoga County and will be uh, recorded with, and also how we're supposed to proceed in future and will be um, recorded and kept on file at Village Hall. Okay, on that, I think <clears throat> at the end of my mayor announcements. So we will move on to uh, the treasurer's report. And we're going to do a two part thing tonight. We're going to be talking about the um, interim budget uh, for which is called the, I guess the 23 budget because it covers uh, June 1st of 2022 until uh, May 31st of 2023. And it is our interim budget. It was um, released as of, um, uh, March 18th, sent to the Board of Trustees, and it is currently on the website for anybody who would like to see it. And it is going to be, there will be a public hearing on the budget on April 11th. Um, so uh, I know that the clerk will um, appropriately notify whatever entities that there, that there will be a public hearing on the uh, proposed budget on April 11th, and then hopefully the budget will be adopted on um, April 25th. But the treasurer is going to give you some overview of the um, tentative, um, the tentative. <coughs> All right, I'll start off with just my normal treasurer's report on um, some of the updates that's been going on. 
Um, the first thing I want to make note of is that I have received the draft draft audit report um, and has made available to the board for review. Um, I have reached out to the auditing firm to see if they are available for presenting on April 11th as per requested by the mayor. Um, unfortunately, he is not available. Um, so if the board has any opinions, I am soliciting for them. Um, we can try to get him set up for April 25th to present <laughs> the audit report findings, or if that's uh, another option would be to um, see if we can get a final copy that would be made available for the public um, sooner than the 25th. Um, that to be said, if you have any comments on that, if not, we can wait till the end. Um, I want to also elaborate on the February reports that have been completed and maybe not sent to the board. I might have forgotten that today. <laughs> um, but one of the things I want to make note of is that this uh, county sales tax is $96,577 received for the month of February. This is up 30% from February sales tax revenue of last year. Um, we have received $10,900 for insurance recoveries. Um, this was the money received um, after an insurance claim to Central Garage after the wind damage, and that happened a few months back. Um, and water and sewer rents received total just under 300,000 in February. Um, this is approximately 50% of the total uh, water and sewer bill, bills bill. Um, I will say that it's not completely representative of how much money we received in February just due to um, how many payments we received. So some of them were a little backward and we'll see some of that revenue um, as of March. Um, to elaborate on the tentative budget, um, it is, as Christine said, um, posted to the website. It is under news and announcements. Um, this was filed on time March 18th. Um, and it is, the tax levy increase is 2.46%, which is within the state's controller's tax cap of 2%. Um, the average assessed value for a home in the village is about $180,000. Um, and this tax rate would mean an increase of taxes of $6.60, $6.60 for a town of Milton home and $11.04 for a town of Boston home. Um, some other points to make about the budget. Um, there is a use of $60,000 of fund balance to help contribute to union fires com fire companies building improvements. Um, the use of 60,000 of fund balance for the fire department is consistent with last year's fiscal year 2021 budget. There is an overall increase of salaries 2.5% to most employees. Um, some that are exempt from that is not within the PBA as we're working on the labor negotiations um, and our part-time hourly uh, staff, which will have a 10 cent increase as of June 1st. Um, there is a 10,000 and the court, sorry, the court did get negotiated at, I believe, $1.75 increase per hour for them. Um, there is a $10,000 increase in engineering fees for this budget year. Um, contingency has been increased from $100,000 to $120,000. Um, year to date, at, uh, spent for contingency is $68,000. We have increased funds for training throughout each department. Um, we have an increased appropriations for auditing services. As we know, this auditing report has taken a long time to receive. Um, so we did want to put in additional money to potentially look at other auditing firms. And we have increased appropriations for utilities and fuel amongst all the departments, seeing that the current situation on that has increased significantly over the last few months. Um, to account for all this, we do have some reductions in expenses, such as workers' compensation for the lower claims, uh, state retirement annual invoice, reduction in health insurance due to better management of retiree plans and lowered enrollment of family plans, and reduce debt service expense based off of the amortization schedule, specifically with our consolidated bond, which includes the DPW equipment that we bonded over the last several years. Um, most of the projected revenue has remained consistent with previous years in history. Um, the one revenue in which we budgeted higher was for sales tax, and that's because we have noticed an increasing trend in sales tax. And that is the general overview of the tentative budget. Uh, like I said, it is posted on the website. And that was most of the increases or changes in the tentative budget that I wanted to make note of. Okay. 
Um, I just want to talk about a couple of things globally, which I'm sure the uh, trustees have have seen. The um, one of the things, and anybody who attended our workshops, our budget workshops, um, heard this discussion. And the discussion is uh, for this particular thing for this particular session is which what day was DPW? March first. March first. Okay. Uh, so the DPW workshop, there was a whole discussion about the needs, the equipment needs of DPW, which um, comes out to, to, because their equipment is, they have tremendous uh, equipment needs. So this is one of the problems in our budget. And um, we have, they need about $1.4 million um, in uh, equipment needs. And the first equipment, piece of equipment that they need, and this is our plan going forward, is they need um, in this, in hopefully in 2023, if we can get it delivered, a um, what's called a vac truck, which is used for water and sewer. Um, and it costs approximately $600,000. The one that we currently have uh, is 29 years old. Um, which is uh, not a good thing. So this machine is used for um, both water and sewer. So the idea is that we would use, um, there is within the sewer fund, there is $130,000 in the uh, fund balance for sewer. Projected. But projector, projector, projector. thank you. Here. But we think that that probably should, we're, we're not gonna, drain that, you know, we should leave that just the way it is, um, but use um, $180,000, um, but based on how the cost of sewer and the cost of uh, water, there should be about $180,000 of the cost of this $600,000 vehicle that is, how should we say, applied to the sewer fund. Uh, but we don't want to use all of their, we don't want to uh, use all of their 130 million. Um, so the 130,000, excuse me. So what we are suggesting, and this would ha happen, is that you would take $180,000 from ARPA funds that are going to come in June of 2022, okay, and apply them um to use for this back truck and then the balance of four hundred and twenty thousand dollars would be taken out of fund balance the general fund fund balance for this purpose so right what but all of your what you're seeing i'm mentioning this because the only thing you're seeing in this um tentative budget is taken out of fund balance is the $60,000 for uh, the fire companies for their roof repairs, okay? But the reason for that is that we do not have, um, if we're going to use ARPA funds of $180,000, even though we haven't received those ARPA funds, we can use them for this purpose and apply them towards the back fund, but we need a resolution of the board to do that. Even in it, we can do it even in advance of getting the offer funds in uh, June, right? They're probably going to come in June. And then we would use from the rest of our fund balance 420, so 420 plus 180 equals 600,000, and that should pay for the, for the truck for this back truck. The other reason we want to use fund balance for this purpose, because this is always an important decision, we have an uh, estimated 2 million, I think, fund balance. 2.3 at, at, at the end of uh, last fiscal year for fund balance, is because we want to finance the rest of these equipment um, through low cost loans. And one of the things we have been investigating is um, USDA, uh, which has low cost loans. But they have told us that we will not get these loans if we're showing that, we have to show that we're using some of our own fund balance and some of our own money in order to finance some of these things. They're not going to help us uh, 
give us a low cost loan if we have, you know, a, a, a quite a large fund balance. So this will reduce between um, between the 420 for um, for the back truck and the 60 from the um, for the roof repairs at, uh, for the fire uh, company that would bring us up to $480,000 in reduction in our fund balance. So that's the thinking, that's the idea. So you may want to consider um, whether or not at the next uh, board meeting you want to uh, do a resolution to use $180,000 from future ARPA funds for the purpose of um, the sewer funds portion of the backdrop. Okay. All right. So that's all I have on the budget at this point. Okay. Um, and so we're going to move on to old business. The old business. Okay. All right. We have under new business. And that is, and thank you for bearing with us. We have two presentations. One uh, by Linda Elmer, who is the vice president of the Boston Area Senior Center. She'll be up first. I would ask, yes, that's me. Okay. Could you come and stand up here so that you can be seen or we'll give you a chair? I'm oh, sorry. She's bringing a chair. Up. She's bringing a chair. Up here. Thank you. No, no. Can you bring it over here yep. so it's it's so that it can be Miss Elmer can be seen. Like that's here. Yeah. Next to Ellie. Yeah. Right. That's good. It's too far. Maybe maybe pull it up just, just a little far. first. Just pull it up so it's on the rug, <laughs> but in line with this. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm Linda Elmer, and I'm vice president of Boston Area Seniors. And I like to thank Mr. Baskin. He come up see us a couple of times, and he invited me down to give you a little talk about what we do up at the seniors. Uh, our mission statement for the Boston area seniors is that we are an incorporated, a nonprofit, tax exempt, Internal Revenue Code 501c3 organization, is to provide a quality of life enrichment opportunity and experience for the Boston area senior members. Members of the Boston area seniors meet for a potluck which weekly at the Town of the Milton Community Center, 310 North Line Road of the Milton Community of Boston Spa, sorry. Uh, we, <coughs> they participate in a wide variety of activities such as enjoyable day trips, festive dinners, hands-on sewing, bingo, dancing, chorus, singing, car playing, golfing, bowling, exercising. We have pool table. Um, we have an active pool table with active pool players. Right now they're all men, but we're gonna have a ladies group start up and they're gonna teach us. So it should be interesting. Uh, and we also like to provide a forum for members to meet new people, to share experiences, and to enjoy interesting conversations. We talk about everything up there, uh, including our, our family stuff, sports is a good one, world news, use of computers, history, medical, everybody shares what's wrong with them. <laughs> uh, that's important. <laughs> Hobbies, science, languages, shopping, we have coupon exchanges, they talk about eating, which is a big thing with them. And um, we also like to have up there, we do do a few raffles and a few bazaars and things. We try to raise a little bit of money uh, so that we can augment what the, the subsidies are from uh, the town of Milton, the town of Boston, and the village of Boston Spa. Uh, our organization is all volunteers. We have no paid directors or 
or anything. We take care of ourselves. Uh, right now, we're really lucky that we have a group of people who can come in to our center when we have something going on. They know what needs to be done and they just go ahead and do it. So that helps us out a lot. Um, we have in our organization 433 members. From the town of Milton is the, the breakdown is the town of Milton is 224. The town of Boston is 22. The village of Boston Spa is 81. And then we have another category of 106, which is non-resident members, which is members who live outside of Saratoga County. And you know, me, maybe they're down, most of them are down in Florida, you know, snowbirds. So, uh, and in our center, our activities, when we were um, really working a lot up there before we closed ourselves down for the COVID, uh, we had anywhere from 50 to 60 people in the building at a the time. There was dancing and exercising and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we had wood carvers come in. We had all kinds of activities. And, and our goal is to get back up to that activity level. Um, future events for this year for the seniors, we're planning a big celebration this summer that gonna celebrate ourselves being back in our home. Because when we closed ourselves down for the COVID, uh, the town of Milton, of course, you all know the story, came in, took over our building, and we were out for a couple of years. So we were like nomads. You know, we, uh, we met over at the gym, um, at the Milton Pound Plaza with the graces of the Bargosian brothers. And we even had a few meetings at the VFW. So uh, we managed to, uh, at least these, these people really have a need to be socialized. And a lot of them were suffering that they weren't doing that. Uh, we're also going to go on a special trip. We're going to have drive-through dinners. Uh, we have some equipment that we need to replace. We also want to start a computer program where we're going to set up uh, what you would call computer ducks where people can write, um, sign up and reserve time. They can come in do their email and, and uh, shop, something like what you guys do at the library when you come in and use the computers. Because a lot of our seniors don't have a computer because they can't afford one. But if we can set something up in the computer, for the computer for the seniors, that'll draw more people in, which is a very worthwhile program, I think. <clears throat> okay. Um, our goal this year for the Boston area seniors is to get ourselves back up and running like we were running two and a half years ago. We had the busiest and the best senior center in the whole area. We had anywhere from 50 to 60 people a day come in to do other uh, activities. Uh, we have our trips. They were always full booked. Uh, we do tri a trip once a month. We go all over the place. We go out to eat. We see a show and you get a bus trip for 35 bucks. You know, you can't beat that. And uh, what else? Also, starting this year, we're going to get the congregate meals from the Office of the Aging. That's going to be starting in April. So we're going to try and work around that, maybe to increase our membership a little bit. And... Uh, It'll be a good deal because right around the community center, we have three or four of those large senior housings. And a lot of people uh, don't drive, they can walk, and they do come to the center. Maybe this will bring even more out. Uh, we're still, we're having now maybe at, at a meeting, maybe 60 to 70 people where we were having 100 when we left for COVID. I have a lot of seniors yet who are home. And they're, they don't want to come out yet. They're scared to come out. But one by one, they're managing to, uh, you know, you can see them. They come in, they stand there, and they look around. <laughs> but uh, we're trying to do it for them. 
but like I said, my goal for the year is to try and get us back to where we were. I know there's a what you call a new normal now. Mm -hmm. There's no reason in the world why we can't be normal, period, again. Mm -hmm. So anybody have any questions? Anyone over 55, you're all welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we do wonderful trips. <laughs> yes, Mr. Austin. I, I only ask this in this way since she's sitting two rows behind me, I think, but my sister is a member because she's- Yes, she is. She's a senior. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> she will tell you she used to change my diapers, so this is called revenge. But, uh, am I allowed to come and visit as an honorary senior when I get sworn in after next week? Absolutely. You come up there. anytime. No. Anytime you want. <laughs> Where is she? Oh, there you are. I might need a separate table. It's the only thing, okay? <laughs> yes. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I came in late. How much, um, how many active members do you have now compared to pre COVID? You might have said that in the beginning, and I'm not. We, right now, as of the last day of December of 2021, we have 433 people. Okay. Our group was very, very lucky when we were uh, meeting at the gym and the VFW, everybody was vaccinated. Everybody was wearing a mask. We were social distancing. We disinfected every little freaking thing that we touched. <laughs> they were really good because I think two people in the whole group of 400 came down with COVID. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it, it wasn't easy. Sure. And a couple times they, I don't want to wear a mask, mm -hmm. you know. Sorry. But overall, your number stayed? Uh, overall, our number stayed. It's a very hard group to keep the numbers where they are. Yeah. Because unfortunately, like I said, 433. I think we've got maybe 10 more. But we also lost four since the beginning of the year. So it's very hard to. Do you, do you have a goal number of members that you're looking for? No. More the better. <laughs> Somebody else said their name? Yes. yes, I'd just like to thank you for our presentation. It was great. Did and I do all right? I, I, I don't know. Really Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Mark, Mark had a question. Mark. I just wanted to say, anything you can do to help? Is there anything you need help with? Oh, we can always use help up there because unfortunately, our membership leads a tour membership now. I know we've got Mr. Sean back there and he helps us out all the time. But as far as the membership goes, you know, we're kind of heavy on the female side. And <laughs> <laughs> Seniors have a sense of humor. Is there an application? Or how, how does one join? One join. All right. Um, we have a website. BostonMiltonSeniors.com. There's an application on that web. How does she pay for it? Oh, oh, I I back down. Um, that's our website, Boston Milton Seniors. We also have a Facebook page, Boston Spa Seniors. Uh, Facebook. What's the other one? Instagram. No. <laughs> oh, Facebook. See senior moment. Facebook. That's Boston area senior. So all that information and then on those places. So uh, we're out there. And it's ten dollars a year. And it's ten dollars a year. That's all it takes. Ten dollars a year. Uh, the scholarship. I could say what it is in other places, but I don't want it. <laughs> but uh, we're the cheapest around. And our trips are all thirty-five dollars. And we do charge $50 if we go to Proctor's because Proctor's their ticket prices are on the site. So um, we just went to Proctor's to see the prom. We're going to go to medieval town, a medieval place, and we're going to eat with our hands and watch the uh, knights joust back and forth. So we got a lot of good things planned for the year. So I'm done. I keep going. I get excited. <laughs> Thank
Thank you, Ms. Ellis. And I, one of the things we've been doing this, as you know, we had department heads come in and speak about what they've done. This is since the beginning of the year. And um, we had DPW, police department, the library, okay, doing presentations. So these are organizations that are, that are, um, we also refund. And um, we're very happy that we provide some funding to provide the Boston area communities, uh, Boston area senior center, ten thousand dollars a year, and that is in the uh, obviously the uh, tentative budget. Okay, the next person we have is Meg Stevens, who we, many many of us know, a long time volunteer, and she is going to talk about the Boston Area Community Center. Ms. Stevens. I'm sorry, I have to follow you, Linda. Oh, <laughs> <good job. laughs> I'm, I'm the new computer teacher up at the senior center now. Um, I volunteered, obviously. Um, yes. Um, the Boston Area Community Center provides essential community services, programs and supports, and projects that enhance the social, emotional, and recreational development of youth and the families of Boston Spa. That's its mission statement. Um, I'm one of the longest seated directors on the board and it is all volunteer directors. We do have paid staff, obviously. We have an executive director who right now is recovering um, from some medical issues. Um, but most of our staff work in the childcare program or they work the, what we call the teen program and the community programs. This year's budget is 924,898 for the income and the expenses are over a million dollars. Um, the extra money to balance the budget will come from a reserve account set up by the board in 2005 for unexpected expenses. I think Ben, you were on the board when we did that um, because we figured something could happen at some point and obviously COVID impacted our programs immensely. The center employs 30 employees. We maintained full employment during the pandemic, even with a reduced number of children in the program. We're lucky to have so many dedicated employees who have stepped up to keep the center running smoothly while our director recovers. The number of teens service, because it was originally called the teen center, um, were way down due to COVID. But the usual number of teens on open nights pre-COVID was around 25 to 30. Adding in the number of teens and organized sports and groups such as Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, over 300 youth use the facilities on a regular basis. This does not include the school age child care program, which has over 200 children in the program, the UP Cup program, which has 45 children in it, and the summer programs, there's two of them, which have over 200 in two programs. Because of funding from the town of Milton, Saratoga County Department of Aging and Youth, they're combined now, the town of Boston, and from the village, we can keep our child care programs at lower rates than many other child care programs, making it much more affordable for working families. And we can continue to, re to offer free recreational activities for the teens. We receive grants from the Holly Foundation, the so Seraphimus, <laughs> and the Stewart's Holiday Match. These grants are used as scholarships for, to put, keep children in the summer programs from the lower income homes. Another one of the programs at VACC is the VITA program. It's a tax program. This year, the program assists with tax, it assists with tax preparation for seniors and others. This year, as of March 15th, these are the latest numbers I have, 170 tax returns have been filed. Over $520,000 in refunds have been claimed with the average refund being around $3,000. Obviously somebody got a lot more than that. Um, all this is done by five volunteers and has saved the taxpayers over $51,000 in preparation freeze. And this is all done by volunteers, by five people. They do an amazing job. The BACC is used by the Girl Scouts, the Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, the little Daisy girls too, they're cute. Um, AAU basketball, soccer leagues, other sport leagues, cheerleading, various civics groups, and is open at no charge for other not-for-profits who wish to hold meetings there. Our programs for youth are slowly improving. They are, the numbers are slowly going back up. 
and the family night open gym has more participants every time it's held. Many of the programs such as Mommy and Me, Homeschooling Gym Time, and the Bridges program have not yet returned from the COVID, but we are optimistic that they will. Um, in previous years, you have, but it's always been sent to you before the budget time, a report, Kathy Lee has sent one. Um, we have created a report, Kathy Lee obviously was not able to, uh, a couple of our staff members have done it. I can make it available. I can email it to the village for you guys. I think we already got it. You already got it? Good, okay, because I asked them to do it, but I wasn't sure if they had. Um, I try not to micromanage them. They're doing a great job all by themselves. Um, are there any questions I can answer? Anybody want to join the team? I'm being honorary team. Sure, you're being honorary team. I am. Make <laughs> sure. um, questions. Sure. The mommy and me programs, the two other programs you mentioned, do they pay a type of fee? No, it's great. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the programs that we provide for the Are community. you still trying to avoid any rate increases for child care? Or does it seem to We're trying to. We, we've been using our reserves um, to make up the difference. I mean, because we were really careful. We really didn't want to let anybody go during the COVID thing. Um, but with parents working from home, obviously they want to put their children in child care. And we had to reduce the number of square footage for the children. Um, but if there's one child in the room, there has to be two adults. Mm -hmm. So if no matter how, if it was just one child in a room, there still would be two adults in the room with them. And then they have to have a supervisor. Mm -hmm. So that's three for one. Do you have sort of a cap point? Like, okay, if the reserve goes to tier, we uh, have We to... haven't set that yet. Mm -hmm. um, we have looked at, and this year we did increase the cost of the summer program, mostly because the bus company increased their fees. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Yeah. yeah, but we try to keep it. On the lower end in the county, um, for others, I mean, some of you, I think, have put your children there. I know, Ben, your kids have been in the program. Um, and in the teen problems, I'm sure some of you that grew up in the village went to the teen center or worked on it or helped with it. Um, and we're continuing that tradition with being open for teens. Okay. I just want to say it, it really is a great program. It's uh, really a jewel of this community, I think. And um, you step up your organization really steps up when there's a need so for example the community band couldn't practice at the school anymore so now they're in the gym at BACC and, and so you're always your, your doors are always open I also want to recognize you because you've been there decades now so so thank you for doing that this is what I do I volunteer I'm on the senior board. <laughs> so it's like I cover both ends. <laughs> um, and just uh, also on Walton Area Community Center, that is something Meg mentioned that the, the um, village does contribute, and they also receive um, $10,000 from the village. And the other thing that they do that is really um, important is they are willing to make themselves available for um, an emergency um, center what it um, shelter. emergency yeah. shelter and I signed in February a letter of support to help them apply for um, that status and to get assistance so they really are um, very, very important to our uh, community and do um, great work. So thank you very much, um, Ms. Stevens. Okay, any other questions or comments? I just wanna say, we saw Kathy Lee at the BOCPA mixer on Thursday and it was just so like encouraging and lovely to see her there and sassy as ever. So <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for you guys to get her back. We can't wait either. <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I didn't ask why you were up there because I wasn't aware that you guys were becoming a, uh, a, a center, right. emergency center. Right. Uh, you might want to get in touch with uh, those of us that are on the uh, Tom Milton emergency. That is, on, that is on my checklist to do. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> we'll help you out. Because we're getting, we're getting a generator put in. Okay, great. Not, we'll, uh, yeah, the generator. So maybe you and I can get together and right. talk a little bit about it. Because uh, Toby and we'll swap yourself out up there too. Right. Yes. Um, Okay. All right. 
Um, so with that, we're going to move on. Um, may I have a motion um, to uh, motion the MBA by uh, motion to uh, that the attached budget transfers be approved. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Trustee Raymond. May I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, second by Trustee uh, Cormos. Um, okay, any any question? Okay, all in favor say aye. All right, aye. All right. all right, may I have a motion that the resignation of Police Department Cleaner Ray Growski be accepted effective immediately? May I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. Motion made by uh, Trustee Raymond. May I have a second? Second by Trustee Baskin. Um, any questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Now this is um, this is the motion to adopt the Village of Boston Spa uh, pedestrian and bicycle master plan. So I'm going to read the resolution. Whereas the Village of Boston Spa, in conjunction with the Capital District Transportation Committee and consultants from VHB and Planning for Places, received a grant from the Capital District Transportation Committee for the Village of Boston Spa Pedestrian and Bicycle Master Plan to design a plan which would promote economic development, improve safety, and create a connected and integrated multimodal transportation network for users of all ages and abilities, and would be used as the basis for future engineering and construction projects in the village working with the community to create safer routes and crosswalks, crosswalks excuse me, to the village, school and recreational facilities, and that takes into consideration the needs of all travelers, including pedestrians, cyclists, transit riders, and motorists. Whereas the Village of Boston Spa Pedestrian and Bicycle Master Plan was finalized in January of 2022, a copy of which is attached here to and incorporated here, here with. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Board of Trustees hereby adopts the Village of Boston Spa Pedestrian and Bicycle Master Plan. May I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. All right, motion by um, I'll second. Yeah. Yeah. Motion by Trustee Formos. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by uh, Trustee Van Dancer. Okay. All right, this is um, a motion that the Malta Avenue Elementary School PTA. Hello, hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All right. Um, motion, this is that the Malta Avenue Elementary School PTA be granted permission to hold a community day celebration on April 30th. Rain date, May 21st, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. This street fair event would block off Malta Avenue between Pine Street and Chapman Street from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. A permit will be issued upon receipt of proof of insurance. May I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Trustee Van Dansa. May I have a second, please? Second by Trustee Baskin. Any questions? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion right. carries. All right. Um, motion to allow the home located at 102 Locust Court, Boston Spa, owned by Melanie and Timothy Brown, to connect to the village of Boston Spa water system. <coughs> Can I have a motion, please? I will make that motion. Motion by uh, Trustee uh, Van Dansa. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Second by uh, Trustee Raymond. Any questions? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Um, motion to appoint Jeff Gores as the acting superintendent of public works, effective immediately with a promotional salary increase of $3,000. 
permanent appointment is subject to the passing of a promotional exam for this provisional title. Uh, okay. May I have a motion, please? I will make that motion. Uh, motion made by Trustee Raymond. May I have a second, please? I'll second. A second made by Trustee Cormos. Any questions? Yes, I have a question. So when um, this passes, the, the appointment is, is temporary. And well, it's, 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 it's provisional. Provisional, right. So does that salary increase happen when he passes the no. exam? No, it happens. It happens now. Okay. Because All he's right. doing the work now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carried. Okay. Um, all right. A uh, motion to appoint Gary Stevenson of 45 West High Street to the Historic District Commission, term ending in 2024, to fill the seat of Donald Traver, who has resigned. May I have a motion, please? I'll make that. Okay, motion made by Trustee Cormos. May I have a second, please? Second. Second by Trustee Raymond. Um, any questions, please? Okay. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Um, motion to appoint Michael Healy of 32 Chapman Street to the library board, term ending in 2026, to fill the seat of Linda Gores, who has resigned. Uh, may I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. Motion by Trustee Raymond. May I have a second, please? Okay. Uh, second by Trustee Daskin. Uh, any questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, motion to appoint uh, Cameron Pawana of 86 South Street to the Zoning Board of Appeals, term ending in 2026, to fill the seat of Bernadette Van Dancer, who was elected village trustee on March 15, 2022. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. Motion by Trustee Raymond. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Second by Trustee um, Baskin. Um, all in favor, say I have questions. Yes. Um, why wasn't Gary Dale considered? He's currently sitting as an alternate. He's been excellent and he's been faithful in serving the village. So I'm just curious, traditionally, we usually promoted alternates. Well, I'm not sure that that's true in each case, but um, Mr. Parwana, also I circulated his, his credential. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, he also has uh, experience working with municipalities in this area. So I'm appointing him, okay? All right. Um, all in favor. Sorry. All in favor. Say aye. 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 I'm opposed. I'm opposed. Nothing against Cameron. I've got to know him over the election cycle. He's a very nice gentleman, but I believe we had a very qualified person who deserved to be promoted. And it's disappointing that he was not. Okay, well, uh, motion carries. Okay. Uh, motion to appoint um, Caitlin Parwana of 86 South Street to the Park and Tree Board, term ending in 2024, to fill the seat of Stacey Simmons, who has resigned. May I have a motion, please? I'll make that. Go ahead. I'll make that. Okay, motion by Trustee Cormos. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Second by Trustee Raymond. Any comments or questions, please? Okay, all in favor say aye, please. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, motion carries. 
All right. Um, motion to appoint Ashley Bush of 36 Birchwood Lane, Ralston Spa to the Committee on the Arts, turn ending in 2023 to fill the seat of Heather Longacre, who has resigned. May I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. Motion made by Trustee Raymond. May I have a second? Second. Second by Trustee Baskin. Any uh, questions or comments? Okay. Um, all in favor say aye, please. Aye. aye. Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. All right. Motion, uh, this is a motion to approve the contract with B and Associates Landscape Architect, BPC, um, doing business as B and Planning and Design for preparation of comprehensive plan for the Village of Boston Spa and to authorize the mayor to execute the contract. The contract cost of $60,000 will be allocated to A8010-4. Do I have any, do I, may I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. Motion by Trustee Raymond. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Second by Trustee Baskin. Okay, do I have any um, questions or comments? Yes, is it typical to receive a contract and vote on it the same day? We just got it this afternoon. Um, Yes, I realize that you just got it this afternoon, but it um, is, has been on the agenda. It's, this is the contract and it was uh, with our attorneys and going back and forth with, with the, um, with the um, going back and forth between the contractor. And the reason we want it, want it done now is because we want, this is, what this group is going to do is put together, as you see from the, from the um, contract is going to take everything that has been done with the by the comprehensive plan and synthesize it and also do public engagement and they want to start on um, April 1st so that's one of the reasons why it um, has gotten to me um, today and also there's a few things that um, like the payment due and payable Carl's notes. Did we get numbers for that? I didn't see that um, on page four and five. I didn't see any anything. I don't know if it was lost in the email. But... No, that that came through at the end. We got a new scope of work. Um, okay. Um, and they addressed all of our concerns. <laughs> Hold on just a minute. Which was everything that Carla said in her email. Can you? Um, can you see yeah, that? I have it here. I have it here. They they addressed and they sent a new scope of work that came quite late today. Those though in the scope of work, the scope of work goes into two dramatical problems, two dramatic issues. What what is the question? So, page four or five. You noted in one of your emails, I saw in the chain that there's missing information. You wanted them to give you more details. Which they did. And okay. there was an email that came at three o'clock today from Mr. Behan. I did not see that, I don't think, unless it got buried in the, the um, thing. I think, I guess my concern is that everything kind of came so rapidly. I believe like everybody on this board should have more time to read. Not to say that Carla hasn't, but you know, and thank you. I saw that you were going back and forth, but I, I'm just personally uncomfortable with this, and I think perhaps it should be tabled if possible till we've had more time to review it. To receive it the day of is concerning. But that's just my personal opinion. So. It's, it's my understanding that this contract negotiation has been going on for some time. So what we're doing is final modifications, not wholesale changes to the general thrust of the contract. Is that that was my understanding. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't, you know, this is quite common that the particulars of a contract um, may be at the 11th hour to try to finalize it, but to keep moving forward with this on the schedule that we, we need to hit so that we can finish the comprehensive plan and move on to the next step of zoning. 
um, I think it's important that you know we move forward. Um, I know it's bad timing for you because coming in at this stage, you haven't had a lot of time to review it, and uh, I, I, it's certainly unfortunate. But um, rest assured, the rest of us have have looked at the contract and, and have been working with it. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think we should keep moving forward so that we can stick to our schedule. Okay, I, I should also add that this is the recommendation that was um, presented to the Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee. And this is their recommendation and they have um, you know, also viewed the um, the contract and they have selected BM, BM. so, um, and they, in order to finish this process by hopefully the fall, really want to be able to start by April 1st. So I apologize for the late notice uh, or the late, you know, timing in, in your case, but I would like to proceed. So do I have- um, If you, I, I just want to, I, there's two questions you guys I wanted to address yeah. those. The 4.4? Yes. Okay, uh, they did remove the percentage interest language. Okay. And then 4.5, um, they're leaving it blank or they're leaving it blank because there's already document uh, dates in the scope of services which is attached to it. So there's no reason to have that in there. So that's all incorporated in there. And the, the other comments in the, in, the, in the scope of service were two grammatical errors which they have removed. I've asked them to send the, to redo the scope, the short form of the standard contract with the changes that Carla just mentioned. Um, and I got that, you know, very late in the day. Um, and the two changes to the scope of services are on, one is on page two, where they under, the consultant will consider Two current studies that was a that was a grammatical error. They needed to take out the consultant will consider current studies. Okay, so that was a grammatical yeah, error. Okay, and the and they took that out. And the other uh, was in the last page, page three of four, um, the last paragraph, the one, two, three, four, five, six line down, where they um, changed four. Uh, along for uh, um, circulation instead of along with circulation. So that was a two grammatical error in the contract. So those were the two changes that came to the, those were the total of the four changes that came in this afternoon. Okay, so all in favor, please. Or may I have, may I have a motion to accept, let's do this again. Let's have a motion to accept the contract, please. I will make that motion. Okay, motion by uh, Trustee Raymond. Um, right. and, and may I have a second, please? Second, yeah. second by Trustee Baskin. May um, all in favor uh, say aye. 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 Any opposition? Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Trustee Van Bansett is opposed. Motion carries. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, this is for the consent agenda. Um, a motion that the police department be authorized to expend an amount of $1,249 for an ID card printer. And that will be taken from line A3120.2. Um, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion. A motion by Trustee Baskin. May I have a second? I'll second. Second by uh, Trustee Van Banza. Um, any questions, comments? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. Let, uh, the motion carries. Okay. The next thing we have are. Trustee liaison reports. Do we have any uh, of those, please? Um, yeah, as far in regard to EPW, I, I received uh, information from uh, 
now Superintendent Dowries, um, that the water pumps that we are waiting for uh, from Roselle Industries um, uh, are still on hold. Um, we haven't been given a definitive date as of yet when they will be delivered um, from the manufacturer. Um, and uh, I just thought to provide that update. Um, currently, there's uh, the pumps, the existing pumps are working satisfactorily and don't have any issues at this time. But <clears throat> provide that update. Okay, which is continue, um, continue to be um, caught in the supply chain. All right, thank you. Any other trustee liaison reports? Um, I just have brief with uh, the Park and Tree Board. They will be scheduling an Arbor Day celebration at the end of April, but uh, you know, once they have the date time and place, they'll be planting a tree. Um, it'll be posted on the website. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Trustee no? Okay. okay, thank you. All right, um, then we have, um, do we have any other business? Um, I was hoping to summarize for the audience and at this point in time with new people coming on the board, where we are with some of our priority projects. And I try to do this quickly. Um, I think the three board members who continue on from Christine's tenure hope to build on the momentum that she and the board generated over the past few months. We welcome the new mayor and board member to contribute their ideas to these plans in progress. The following have been and continue to be some of our main priorities. So these are the priorities that I'm listing here. So water, the board is engaged in it and it is engaging an engineering firm which will conduct a water system feasibility study this spring and apply this year for grants to implement improvements. Water rates will then be analyzed and potentially restructured based on results of the study. Well water, number two. Following the recent completion of the well field study, the village will implement this spring the recommended flushing of a well that was identified in the study. Number three, sewer. We're thinking about doing a three-phase approach. Phase one would use ARPA money to determine the condition of the sewer pipes in the highest need areas and recommend relining or replacement. This will be followed this year, we're hoping by a grant application to implement recommendations. Phase two would be then to apply for an environmental facilities grant to study the remaining larger sewer system in the, in the next year and follow that with implementation grants. Phase three would then be um, to examine and potentially restructure sewer rates based on the results of these studies. So again, everything takes several years to, to start and complete. Buildings, number four, we will pursue grants and low interest funding sources for land and building purchases and new building construction. And you all know our public facilities are in dire disrepair and really need uh, replacement, many of them. So the DPW, we've begun the site search and talks with public and private landowners, including county owned land. Police and court, we're exploring the EMS building and other sites. Village hall, we will, we'd like to fix structural defects, the retaining wall and the underground vault. We'll conduct safety and preventive maintenance, and we'd also like to explore just what some cost-effective alternative sites might be, because it's so expensive to maintain. DPW, we are planning to buy, as Christine said, six hundred thousand dollar backtrack. Thank you, how much that cost. Um, but um, so she's updated that. So, but DPW equipment and personnel are very high priority, and um, and Christine has made sure that they're taken care of this this budget. Fire station, as you mentioned, you're fixing the firehouse roof. PDD, plan development. We will finalize the PDD with modifications. We'll, 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 we, we'd like to finalize the PDD with modifications, incorporating suggestions by local commercial property owners and others. And we do welcome, obviously, uh, new, new board members as well, um, your suggestions. Crosswalk and Route 50. Uh, DOT will conduct a study of a, for a crosswalk on Route 50 uh, near Doubleday Woods this spring, next couple months, and either DOT or the village will install it this year. Hopefully the DOT will. 
uh, depends on usage. They have a threshold um, that they need to meet. Sidewalks. We stopped considering a sidewalk fee last summer. We expect and hope the mayor will just enforce current maintenance and snow clearing laws village wide. We're hoping a village will um, would like repairs to, to no longer be dependent on complaints. That but instead we'll use a building inspector to use the sidewalk inventory, which which identifies the, the uh, worst sidewalks, and use that as a, as um, a roadmap of um, where to start. Um, we'd also like to explore the creation of a new law that when homes are sold or built on a street with sidewalks, that either the buyer or seller, doesn't matter to us, um, must add a sidewalk if there's a street with a sidewalk or bring existing sidewalk up to code. And so we're relying on you, Carla, to figure that out, see if we can do that. Sometimes- No pressure there. But <laughs> as we've, we've learned with other things and other sidewalk proposals actually that we'd like to pass a law and then the village does not have the authority to pass that kind of law. Like it varies by town, city, village. So we're not sure if that's viable, but we'd like to explore it. And, <laughs> and the last thing on our list is transparency. Um, and communication. We, we will continue promoting transparency and inclusiveness with public communication and input via multiple methods, including the newsletter, website, department annual reports, and nonprofit reports, as you saw tonight. Um, I personally like to explore feasibility of web surveys. They're doing that in town of Boston and the school district. They send out surveys. Um, we should be able to do that. Um, also, as we've done in the past year, we will. Um, put drafts of legislation, like with PDB and other legislation, we'll put that out there for public input before it comes to public here, so that there's plenty of time for people to provide input on uh, major legislation. One thing that um, coming up that I think I'll, I'd like to make sure comes up is um, just what are we doing with smoking laws and regulations with, you know, the new tobacco and, and can, can it, uh, marijuana, uh, <laughs> cannabis, cannabis. cannabis. Um, use so you know we can anticipate additional uh, smoke and um, so what should we do we do need to update when you look at the code this actually is out of date even without if there wasn't a change in the, in the cannabis laws um, so we want the village to know that work on our on these top priorities it is in progress and moving forward and that the new mayor and trustee will have additional ideas when we welcome them we look forward to working together as a team but I just thought that might be helpful at this point in time. Thank you. Okay. Um, I can have um, one thing of other business, and I meant to put this in my mayor announcement, so I'm going to order, um, put it in here before I move on to public comment. And that is about the records management program, which is in full swing. We have three new records rooms set up. We have consultants who have come in and are working fast and furiously. And they are not only, what they're doing is they're discarding records. There's a, a rubric, as I've said before, established by the um, state archives about what you must keep what you can destroy um, and um, they are going to, they're going through that process and they are going to set up a whole database uh, for us. Um, they are they have worked very closely with uh, the village clerk and myself and we're very grateful to DPW who has established um, these rules. Just so you know they started on the 21st. And thus far, they have gotten rid of um, 9,760 pounds of paper that was not needed. And I have to also tell you, back in 2019, the clerk and I and Maria McCashin from State Archives also got rid of 9,000 pounds of things that were not needed. Um, and these are going for uh, destruction, of course, anything that has, it is in any way sensitive, like has any kind of um, identifying information is gonna be shredded, but that's, that's what we're up to so far, 18,000 pounds of material. And just to give you an instance, the first thing that went out on the first day were copies of parking tickets from 1987. Okay, so that's the kind of, and 
this is better. It is really better that we saved everything than that we got rid of things. That's really in a much better place to be. But I just wanted to give you um, some information uh, about this. And obviously, once they set this all up and there's a database, there'll be training on how to maintain um, our records. Okay. With um, that, yes. I'd like to just to say a few words since this is your last meeting. Um, I've worked with Christine uh, first 28 years ago. Over the years, our paths crossed several times. Besides being professional colleagues, we also became friends. She told me about the wonderful community she lived in, Boston Spa. She's one of the reasons we decided to build a home here. I will never regret her take, taking her, talking her into running along with me three years ago. It's one of the smartest decisions I ever made. <clears throat> she is one of the most capable, intelligent, and honest people I know. Her contributions in three years include implementing the sexual and harassment policy and training program, writing and implementing the 116,000 no match grant for records management, working with the library board to make significant improvements to the library building and its operations, hiring and working with professional firm to conduct our labor negotiations, which resulted in a successful contract with DPW, and always spending the time necessarily to thoroughly evaluate financial decisions, as well as any ideas brought to the table. She stepped up, not missing a beat when the former mayor quit, winning over the whole village staff within days. We've not always agreed on every point, but we respect each other and sometimes agree to disagree. Even our former mayor praised her saying, Christine has been a model trustee and a great village servant. She is probably one of the most non-political people I know, more interested in governing than running for office. Her moderating nonpartisan voice will be greatly missed. I believe I speak for all of us when I say, I hope to see her on the other side of the table at future village meetings. Thank you, Christine, for your contribution to making a better bee spa. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Liz. Um, all right, now I'm going to open this up to um, public comment. Christine, um, I also want to thank you. Oh. <laughs> but I don't have a long speech. I just want to say you stepped up and you, you really, um, you never intended to be mayor, and, <laughs> but you did a, an extraordinary job under very difficult circumstances. And the whole village is grateful that you did that at that time. And it showed tremendous character and courage. And I appreciate that. I want to thank you for that. And I guess I'll try and do it. Short, sweet. Um, uh, the short period of time that I've, you know, I've been your deputy mayor, um, it's been a um, an honor and uh, a learning experience for me. And uh, I I appreciate your mentoring and your wisdom. And uh, um, I know that I will use it going forward. So thank you. Okay, now I'm going to open this to public comment. You have four minutes. Um, and um, please remember that we're all here we're talking about village matters, village business. Okay. And Okay. Let me, can I, I make can I make a, a, just a suggestion for uh, time constraints? Can we maybe do it by row so people know when they're going to be called, just to make it easier instead of trying to pick like that? I'm just wondering if that's I've seen that happen in other. I hang on, Mr. Buck. I've seen that happen. In other, <laughs> I've seen that happen in other municipalities, and it just seems to be a little bit easier to get people. Oh, no, wait, okay, wait in the last row, want to talk and then go back forward. But, but some people to... might decide after something is said that they right. want to talk. So yeah. 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 I, I was I just yeah. presenting something I've seen work successfully in other municipalities, but okay. this is your meeting. All right. 
Thank you. This is in the back, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Would you come right. up? Oh, yes, please come up and stand here so that we get to hear you and people get to see you. And thank you for waving at me. <laughs> how, how about creating a line of people that do want to speak to eliminate this aspect of it? Would that be something to at least hustle it up? But if people don't know that they want to speak. Well, but they can yeah. give it back one. Let's just see. So, yeah, go ahead. If you want to queue up, queue up along the side. Yeah. Yeah. All right. If you want to do that, go right ahead. But I don't think you would be standing during everybody else's presentation. Are we lighting up? All right. Please state your name and your address. Ann Spanko, 32 Penn Street. I am here to express my displeasure with this board um, for overlooking. I, I'm here as the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals for overlooking a member on our board who has been on there for three years, Gary Dale. He has served the board on many occasions when we've had vacancies. The policy, maybe not in writing, but has been to promote alternates. Myself, I was an alternate before I became member, before I became chair, Bernadette was, past chairman Paul Lasky was. So for this board to overlook a very qualified person who has had their training, no less, for the Sony Board of Appeals, I think is, um, a, a pretty political move, and um, I'm a little, I just want to, on the record of my displeasure. Thank you. Okay. The next thing, you. <laughs> Ray Houghton, 16th <coughs> Avenue, Boston Spa, New York. Okay, I got uh, three topics. First, uh, I was on the committee uh, as part of the, the bike and sidewalk committee. And I understand that this whole plan came together. I didn't realize it was gonna be the plan that we were going to adopt. One of the things that I want everybody to know on this board and everybody here, that if you look over that 126 page report, which I have read fully, I'm that kind of guy. Um, one of the things I noted in there was over a 14 hour period, various days, two hours a day, there were 28 bicycles noticed at different intersections throughout our village. So we're adapting a plan that part of this $1.7 million in recommended changes to the village for 28 bicycles. Another part of that is that in there, we always hear that cars speed on Hyde Boulevard and there's all these big trucks that go by. Read the report. We are putting our faith in that study. And if that study is right, it says in there that there is a perception by the folks that live on Hyde Boulevard that car speed. But in fact, they were going almost a mile an hour less than our 30 mile an hour speed limit on Hyde Boulevard. You talk about that and the people on Hyde Boulevard say, well, they, they, they looked at it in the wrong place. They took the readings in the wrong place on Hyde Boulevard. Just remember that when you're looking at this whole plan. Secondly, come on phone. Uh, I don't know, my time's ticking here. I don't do well when, when I'm standing. Okay, the park appointments. Now, I don't want a Chris Rock, uh, Will Smith thing going on. Cameron, I'm gonna talk about your wife, okay? I can hear it. I don't even know who she is. And you got two beautiful kids. I saw them out in the yard the other day with you. Um, I have no idea who Caitlin is. I, I hope that I'm on the park committee and I hope that I enjoy working with her. But Stacy resigned on the 31st, or I'm sorry, on the 19th, which was a Saturday. On the 22nd, which was the following Wednesday, 
Caitlin put in a letter that she wanted to be on this committee. Never went out to the public. It was never announced by you guys. You accepted a resignation tonight from an employee, but a resignation off the board wasn't announced to anybody. And nobody on the park and tree board knew that Caitlin was going to be coming and joining us. I mean, what, what's up with that? I don't get that. I don't understand that. No. Um, nobody on the board, including the board chairman, was told that this was going to happen. And Cameron, like I said, I don't know your wife. She's probably a wonderful person. I don't know her. I'm not, it, it could be, it could be, you know, anybody. It could be you. It could be you. Why wasn't this put out to people that might be interested? Right. You have 30 seconds left. I have 30 seconds left. Good. That's enough. Ben, <laughs> you're my last. You said last week in answer to my question about why you didn't know the fire chief for a year that you've been in office. And you said you were intimidated by the fire people. Well, I got news for you. It's a good thing that you didn't run against doctors or dentists because your teeth would be falling out and you'd be sick. How can you say you were intimidated by firefighters? These are the folks that do all sorts of stuff for you. Just didn't say right. Sorry. Thank you. Somebody who looks for ADA compliance, I don't agree with this having to come up here to speak. Mr. Mayor. Yes. All right, Ellie Dillon, 116 Malta Avenue. I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you for stepping in and steering this ship with dignity and class. You will be sorely missed, Mayor Christine Dispatcher. Um, Angela McFarland, 365 Milton Avenue, Bolston Spa. And I wanted to speak to your gracious comment of transparency because I've been vocal about hiding behind the Wizard of Oz curtains. And I have absolutely thrown myself into the ring pro bono to help this village create appropriate social media policies for government officials. I've also made myself available based on Christine's mention of public officer's law to help this village really come up with a good modern ethics policy that is so sorely needed. And I do hope to see communications be more open. I hope to see social media platforms, a two-way conversation. But more importantly, I wanna see elected officials with their names behind the comments that are being made. That's pretty important to me. And I do want to see better communication, such as when you use words like the whole village, Ben, to be used more carefully because the whole village is extremely divided right now. And I think that's more of an accurate statement. So choose your words carefully. Additionally, the online bullying, all of these other things that every one of you is perfectly aware of. I just wanna make sure my message is clear that I feel silence is compliance. And we do understand the complexities of these types of mannerisms and behaviors. So I do hope you're being sincere, Ben and I hope to see good cooperation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, Amy Jenkins, 37 Grove Street. Um, I help coordinate the- I, Well, you, well I share, I come with you. <laughs> and Richard Batshaw, 65 Chapman Street. <laughs> Um, we help coordinate the ice skating program on Eastern Avenue, and I just wanted to thank the village and Christine for um, for supporting the program. It's such a great program in our community, and this year we found ourselves in need of a sponsor in order to keep moving forward, and the village stepped into and filled that role. 
Um, ben, thank you for just helping me make all of the phone calls between, it's, it's a big, it's a giant community effort between the school, the village, the DBW, and volunteers. Um, we had a great season. We skated from January 15th through uh, February 19th over five weekends. Um, it was a little shorter than we would have liked. We like to go through the February break, but um, the weather just didn't cooperate. But we had um, around 300 skaters during that time, which was huge. I've been there for many years. It was the best turnout I've ever seen. Um, and I just, I'm just so glad to uh, be able to be part of bringing this to our to our community. So thank you very much for supporting that program. I'll just add that uh, I'm not sure how many years ago it was that the program kind of fell apart because there were a lot of people trying to get it done, but it wasn't really working out. And Mayor Romano really stepped up and was really supportive of what we did. And he came to bar meetings with us and really pushed it forward. So really, and then right straight through, and this might have been 17 years ago, from that, this board and that board and all the boards going back have really been supportive. We really appreciate that. And I'd like to single out Jeff. Corey's, who's been a real big advocate and big supporter, and the folks at DBW that help support plowing and getting it done for us. So we really appreciate that. And I guess lastly, I just say congratulations is in order to you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Black, 10 Thompson Street. First, I'd like to talk uh, what Ben said about transparency. I've been trying to get out the message that uh, you have a major ethics violation in this community. And I posted it on Facebook. I tried to post it on the arts committee and they kept uh, deleting it, which is a, which is a uh, restriction on my first amendment rights. I brought that up to Christine and she brought it up to Carla and their Solution was that nobody can communicate anymore on any village platform. So if the, if the fire department, the police department post something, whether it things, the arts, the library, you cannot respond anymore. Because if it's not, if one person doesn't get the right, then nobody gets the right. So there is no transparency then. You are limiting our First Amendment rights. Okay, now that may not go through, but I'm still being blocked. So I'm not sure what, I assume that's the policy now. Nobody gets to discuss anything on a village run website or platform. That's just the way it's gonna be. Recently, I had the opportunity to, uh, my second point is recently we had the opportunity to apply for between 120 and $150,000 arts grant. It was a last minute thing. I waited because I wasn't willing to work with this government. I've been treated badly uh, by these people. And so I waited until the election to move forward with it. That was a week ago. Uh, last Friday, I've had, I had a standing meeting with Christine. Um, I got, uh, she canceled at the last minute. I went in to see if I can get five minutes. She absolutely had a meltdown. She screamed at me, she yelled at me. She said she will not talk to me even as I stood there holding up the grant going, this is due. This is a great thing for our program. Um, you know, this would have funded the birdhouse program, the banner programs, everything we did in the last four years that I've been doing it, the Christmas programs, she would not speak to me. She slammed the door and walked, you know, walked away. This is inappropriate. This was rude. This is not leadership material. This was unprofessional. You may not like me, I don't like you, that's fine, but we need to work together. This was an incredible opportunity by the Mellon Foundation, giving money into our community to, they see that the arts has the ability to uh, generate economic growth, community engagement, which is exactly what the programs I started did. I don't understand why Christine didn't want to do it. It was a last minute thing. This was, it's not art. She wanted me to go through the arts committee. There was no time involved. And there's no reason, the arts a committee only makes suggestions to the mayor. The mayor can work without and talk with their, the trustees 
without any committee members. You know, it can be communicated with them. After the meeting, Julia asked to share the material with the trustees. I assume she did. Julia's wonderful. Um, again, no, no response. Um, people have criticized me. People have tried to sabotage my projects. Um, Liz did it twice last year. I was one of the fallouts from the Wiswell Park problem. She also tried to cancel the pro project at Iron Springs Park. This is the difficulty that I have had to improve this community. And now it's all gone because we don't, you know, this is a huge, this opportunity isn't, doesn't come around a, a, a lot. I mean, th this is like the WPA. They were giving out millions of dollars and Christine had a meltdown on me. It's, Okay. Yes. Lisa Spidel, 106 Prospect Street. I wasn't going to come up here and speak tonight, but um, I think it's important that I do I want to say welcome to Bernadette. And I'm looking forward to um, working along with everybody here and everybody else working along with you to represent um, all of us in the village, not just Democrats, not just Republicans, all of us. We can all, it's, it's not a designation, we're people. We all have hearts, we all, have, we all care about our village and we need to do that. With that being said, um, I also want to say something. Um, Ray, you brought up a good point about Stacey Simmons. I sat in on the um, Park and Tree Board meeting, I think it was on election night, and because that's what I'm interested in and whatnot. And I read on the agenda that Stacey, I'm, I'm good friends with Stacey, I've known her. I grew up in this village. I went to school with her. I know her well. Um, and I was I was sad that she resigned for whatever reason. I don't know. I have not spoke with her, but I was sad about that. And hearing that it wasn't even posted and nobody on camera, and I, I didn't even know your name until this election came out. I grew up here. I'm 48 years old. I'm proud that I'm a Boston Spa resident mostly town of Boston. I bought a house in the village because it's, it's close proximity to take care of my mom as she ages. And, and that's what works for me. I want to be a part of that community. I didn't get the opportunity to even know there was a vacancy on that board. That bothers me. Mark, thank you for the birdhouse project. When I couldn't live in my house because there was issues with it that had fixed, I walked that trail and I walked, I still do when I see those birdhouses. I love them. I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate. I think, um, Angela, you said it. Um, silence is compliance. Yeah. Us as residents, those of you watching from home, you need to, however you voice your opinion, do it in letter, do it in writing, whatever. You need to be heard because if you're not, it doesn't get out to the rest of us. And it's gonna take all of us to convince this board to listen to us. We have voices, we pay taxes, we keep this place going. If it wasn't for us, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't want to live in this village. You'd go elsewhere. Appreciate us. Be grateful for us. He was just standing a little higher than you. Okay. Mike Rossi Jr., 63 Saratoga Ave, apartment B in Boston Spa, also known as, I can't believe I'm saying this, Mayor Elect. Thank you to everybody here. Thank you, thank you for those who voted for Christine as well. No thank you to anybody that didn't vote because it's your civic duty, you should be out there. Come on up. But the fact is we had 1,070 voters, I think, give or take. And as you said in an article, Christine, the uh, franchise being used to that degree was actually it, really heartening for, I think, both of us to see that. And thank you for running a campaign that was definitely something that was a challenge, but for something that helped us get some issues really denoted. <clears throat> Gotta say, Bernadette, though, I feel like Ben was watching our uh, little post-meeting uh, discussions because a lot of things you said didn't seem like they were necessarily 
right front and center there, Ben, mm -hmm. until we began bringing them up in the campaign. I'm thrilled to hear some of them, I actually am. But what I'm not thrilled to hear about, I wanted to bring up a topic and then go to that question. Respect. Christine, I respect you. We'll talk more about that in a second though. Respect, that's okay. Respect is not Ben putting on Facebook that nothing's gonna get done for 18 months. By the way, it's 20. The voters spoke. I didn't say that. Oh, well. oh, here we go. Liz, respect is not telling people on the street or wherever the same thing, essentially, that I'm down three to two, so I'll get nothing done. Let me promise the crowd here tonight and everybody at this table, there will be plenty done in the next 20 months. I didn't get elected to be a ringmaster, I got elected to get things done. Heard that same thing. Great discussion points tonight. Did me proud, did your parents proud and your uh, brother, indeed. But respect is not any of those things. Respect is not letting your surrogates during an election go unhinged. We saw what it leads to. Flowers and a note to the former mayor because somebody felt justified in doing that. Friend. That's not village business. It is in fact village business. Is village it business. is in fact village business. Our demeanor and our temperament as was brought up during the elections quite frequently is very much village business. Well, Thank political. you. Thank you, it's Sean. Sean, business. Sean, this is my four minutes huh? and it's village business. Our attitudes are indeed, and that's disrespectful to jump in there because you know better. Well, you know the rules. I do know the rules. Reclaim your time. I'm going to. Thank you. Respect is not telling me yesterday, Sean, that you have a list of alternates for me to consider for committee positions. That that's how we run things around here. And then tonight, disrespecting the point from Bernadette, skipping Gary Dale for the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's not respect. That's not respecting anything. That's political. We have to stop that stuff. We lost that grant. I posted the uh, email from today about the Fidisco grant, the real story about what's happened there and getting a phone call at 10 o'clock at night on Friday and Sunday night, not even as mayor yet, from Jim Tedisco about that grant and what's happened here. Check it out on Facebook, don't wanna lose all the time here. But we have to do better with respect, consistency and realizing while you always want to say we're just the equal one fifth, guess what? The major, the mayor controls a large portion of the agenda and has. I'm reclaiming 15 seconds. I there. Mean, okay, well. But now you're down 15 seconds. The mayor last. Either way, the mayor controls the agenda to a certain degree here, and I want to work with you, not against you. But those statements made don't help matters one darn bit. Christine, you took the powder for this group and I uh, took the mayor position knowing you'd have to run. I feel bad that this happened the way it did. I honestly do because I actually think you're a good person. I think anybody that is in public office, the degree you have been, is a good person. I don't agree with everything you'd say or do, but I appreciate you and what you did for your group. I'm sorry I had to come to this point, but I do hope you stay involved. I really do because you are an important part of our community. And I do respect you, indeed. See everybody next week. Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Mike Icalucci, 9 Russell Street. And I just want to be completely upfront. I'm not technically a resident of the village. My wife and I own property that extends into the village but our residence is not considered part of the village. Uh, nonetheless, we've lived here for 37 years. We like the village. We're glad we live here. I wanna thank you, Christine, for your selfless efforts over the last several years. Uh, I know that Christine is a good person. There is no doubt of that. And I think she has gone to great effort to include people of whatever political persuasion in deliberations 
we might not agree with decisions she makes or this council makes, but she's approached it with an open mind and an honest heart. And thank you for that, Christine. Bernadette and Mayor Elect, congratulations on you know, the results of the election. Uh, I look forward to continued work on behalf of everybody in the village from these folks as well as you too. I think both former Mayor, Mayor Woolbright and Christine have done a very good job of governing during the last four years. I personally do not think social media is a place for governing to occur. Exchange of ideas is fine, but it's not the place for governing to occur. If we really want to move forward and have this council work on behalf of all the residents, I ask everybody to stop and think about what it means for any one person to be a member of a particular party. People who are in a different political party should not be viewed as enemies. Amen. They might have steps you wish to take, but they are not an enemy. Mm -hmm. And I think we all need to be sure and keep that in mind. In terms of cooperation and seeking input from everybody, I, I would ask people to recognize that people in the village, no, no one I know of, is contesting the results of the election. These two candidates won their seats, they will serve. And if any of you have any doubt about that, please talk to me. I'll throw Ellie Dillon out there. I'm sure she would be happy to respond as well. My spouse, Martha. We are not challenging the election. It occurred, people have taken, will take on their seats in the case of the mayor elect. And I wish them the very best going forward. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm gonna go. What the hell? <laughs> Gina Morosi, 10 old Lori Lane, both in spot. Things that bother Gina. We're gonna talk about things that bother Gina. You're comfortable, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> The fact that the Easter egg hunt was canceled because it didn't get done in time by village office. And Mark Leck and I stepped up. I made Mark step up. And we took it on and in two days put it together and there has not been one announcement about that. Mark who has been so wronged so many times by this village office stepped up and is helping me make sure there's an Easter egg hunt and, and events for the children on April 10th. And I'm Jewish. And he's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark is amazing. And the way he was treated over this grant was despicable. First thing that bothered Gina. Second thing that bothered Gina. And Sean, I don't even want to hear it. Flowers in the note. No one in that village office, no one on this board stood up and said, you know what, that was terrible. Mm -hmm. That should not have happened to Larry and Meg. Mm -hmm. Not one of you said that. And I find that despicable. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you all right now, I think it's despicable and I hope you all do too. Yeah. Yeah. Next thing that bothers Gina, the Tedisco grant. Christine, you left out the part that we are most likely going to lose that grant. Why did you do that? Ben just talked about transparency and it's very real possibility that we're gonna lose that grant. I don't know if you guys realize that's $100,000 because decisions couldn't be made. Perhaps there weren't enough studies done, but we're gonna lose it. it Frank's working with Tedisco, they're trying to make it happen, but the reality is, and I said it from day one, do not let New York State be your banker. If the money's there, take it. Yeah. And no one listens to Gina, because what does Gina know, right? I don't know anything. No one ever listens to me up here. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing that bothers me is I cannot believe that a grant for the children of our village to have our events again, our family fun day, 
are sledding, right? Swimming under the stars. Swimming under the stars, the birdhouse program, everything that Mark has worked on was let go because of political, it was politicized. That nauseates me. So Mark and I will continue to step up and do what we can, how we can, with the generosity of the various departments in the village and the various volunteers in the village that want to help us preserve these events, because that's what makes us a village of friends. So please continue to work with us in spite of all that. Thank you. Yes. My name is John Carollo. I live at 38 Washington Street. I've been a uh, member of this community for going on six years now. And the best thing I ever did was to, to leave New York City to come here and, and find a place I can call home. And um, it's allowed me to do many things from working at a family court to working for a horse trainer, walking horses, and I can't wait to get back because I need a horse sense. But um, it was an honor to be a part of the campaign that, that helped elect Christine and Liz to the trustees to the board. And um, I have to say, I felt like Rip Van Winkle to come out of the hospital. I had a lot of issues last year four different hospital visits over 60 days um, to find out that uh, Larry, Larry wasn't here anymore, that Christine was now the um, deputy mayor. It, it, it was, I felt like we were Van Winkle, but I think that you know, there's a lot of anger coming out of everyone from both sides, which it's a little okay, because I mean, we did it with the federal election too. And, um, it's time to get, get our heads together and work as a team to, to create a better community for our, our children for the future. And um, I, I have to say that there was a, a, a from the very beginning, uh, um, I, I heard Mark make a comment that was rather misogynistic and refused to uh, have a garden, uh, garden party uh, woman telling him what to do with the arts project. He was protesting that. So it's a little disingenuous that he feels like he had a problem. But um, be that as it may, welcome, Frank. Um, goodbye, Christine, but I hope to see you all uh, again. <laughs> you can still be any friends. And uh, that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Anybody else in the group here? Okay, anybody else online? Yes, I have one hand raised, uh, no name uh, posted, so I will allow Galaxy S8 to permission to speak. And then tell me your name and address, I'll write it down. Let me get it. You have to unmute. You have to unmute on your end. We cannot hear you. All right, uh, at this point, should I go? Um, anybody else for public comment? <laughs> Um, no, no, it's a, this is actually a question for Julia. This is, um, sorry, I know I just, uh, this is not about, <laughs> uh, Julia, I've always wondered, are, are uh, expenses, you know, our income sort of goes 2% or 3% this way, you know, up, our costs sort of go much higher, as we know, our 
I mean, all of our home price, home costs go up. At what point do they cross and the village is no longer financially viable? Is that a real concern? No, I mean, it's a very difficult question. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I guess I don't have much. Uh, and I understand that. that. Yeah, I was just wondering if that's something you guys would consider. <laughs> I mean, you have to raise the tax levy for any expenses that your appropriations cannot cover, yes. Um, your revenues cannot cover. But at this point, we're at about a $1.8 million um, tax levy. So there would have to be a larger increase to set up that balance in which there'd be no taxes. Okay, anybody else? Any member of the board want to respond to anything that's being said? So we're going into the part of the agenda, which is the board response. I can respond to a couple things. One is, I don't remember, I don't believe I ever said that we weren't going to get anything done. Um, and in fact, the whole point of me talking about what we're getting done is I'm, wel off, I'm welcoming you and hoping you will help us get things done and that there's a moving train here we hope you'll hop on and join us and help uh, drive that train and we hope actually to get a lot done in the next 18 months before the next election so I don't know why I would ever say we're, I, we're not gonna, you know, that's not something I would say so I hope and will work very hard with everybody here to get as much done as we can because everything takes time you know Corinne they raised like 30 million, $31 million or something, but it took seven years. So it's not something one year and you're done. So we, we have to keep moving this along. And I wanna assure you that has always been the agenda and priority of this board, um, whether or not it's been, uh, there have been political messages to the contrary. So uh, that is just, I don't know where that came from. Um, the other thing, just to respond to the whole arts grant issue, we never received a proposal. So in order to be responsible, uh, to have fiduciary responsibility for this village, we cannot just sign off on something we haven't seen. In fact, Mr. Rossi said that if we didn't respond to his email, he'd take that as approval, as tacit approval for the grant. That is not how village uh, governance is run. You, don't, you cannot get uh, tacit approval of something via email things have to happen at a board meeting and because you waited mr black till the election was over you ran out of time we could have been quite open i actually am very uh admiring of everything you've done i love the birdhouses i love walking on to the disco trail um, you've done some great work but we can't vote for something we haven't seen we didn't see the we didn't we weren't given a proposal to review. And I it was, tried to, she had a meltdown. Was accepted. And by the, had an you, absolute meltdown by the time the election was over, it was too late because well, you need a board meeting that's yeah. publicized and you need to follow certain steps. Even if the arts committee isn't involved, um, it was gonna be too late. So because you made that choice, it was too late. It's unfortunate because it could have been a great thing. Hopefully there'll be other opportunities because I do value your input. Uh, no, so, <laughs> So hopefully there's other grants. All right, well, that's enough for now. I'll probably look at my notes and see what else. Oh, social media. I don't know if you want to talk to that, Carla, about the propriety of, of using social media on a government platform. Do you mean in response to Mr. Bliss? Well, uh, question about allowing comments, comments, open comments, things like that. I, I can speak to that. Um, uh, most municipalities have official social media pages and they are run by you know, the municipality. And um, one of the things that is often done and has often been advised by NICOM, by the, which is the New York Conference of Mayors and Municipal Officials. For those of you that don't know, the Village of Bulk Spa is a member of NICOM. Uh, NICOM is a statewide organization uh, that really, um, and, and I know that um, the trustees here know about NICOM and I believe Mayor Lech Rossi knows NICOM. They're a great uh, resource and they give you, they have attorneys on staff, they have folks on staff to help you out. Um, Association of Towns, similar, uh, um, similar kind of group. 
um, and the various courts and the uh, the laws really discourage um, municipalities from allowing comments in general on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on whatever, um, I don't know if you guys know Twitch, on Twitch, on anything that, you know, TikTok, anything that's out there. Um, because number one, it's very difficult for a municipality to, to administer that. So you have a social media page that you all could be sitting there right now typing on it right now. And then um, let's say Jennifer is in charge of administering the social media page in addition to her thousand other duties. And then you don't get a response. And you take that to be a negative. And that comes back at her. And then it comes back at the board. But it was really just, she's doing something else. So one of it's a practical matter. With respect to the other part, to your point, Mr. Fleck, um, the First Amendment does come into play, which is why it's encouraged not to have uh, public's comment on official pages, because you cannot have comment content discrimination and you cannot look at that. It has to be content neutral. So I don't know what occurred. I was not counsel. I was not part of this. I, I came in at the end um, and it was my advice and I will own it that um, in order to protect the village, which is my job as counsel for the village, the village, not each of you individually, so we'll all get excited that you have a new attorney. Um, <laughs> I, I've had people come up to me in other places saying, well, you're my attorney. Um, you're scaring me, go that way. Um, but the fact is, if we say no to everybody, it is, it is content neutral and there is no discrimination. That being said, on both, for example, the, and I'm just directing it to you because you've brought it up, on both, and I checked, on both the Instagram um, page for the Committee on, uh, on the Arts, on the Facebook page, and on the Village page, the Facebook page, and I don't think they have an Instagram page. I, I, don't, I don't believe so, or a Twitter account or anything like that. Um, it does say, if you would like to speak to somebody, here's our website, here's our contact information. That's how you should communicate. Social media is not the best vehicle when, I, and I don't know, Mr. I can't pronounce your last name, um, I oh, yes, right, Lucy. Lucy. yes, where um, you, you made a very good point that, you know, being on social media is not what government should be. You'll find that you can't comment on federal government pages. You can't comment on various pages. So I hope that answers your question, Trustee Bass. And that's why the uh, policy is being implemented that any official uh, village social media accounts are will not allow comments, but that doesn't mean you don't have the right to call up the village or to email the village or to stop by the village or to write the village. So I hope that answers your question. Sure, and Carla, I applaud everything you just said. And as you said, Thank most you. of the time, that is the policy, but there should be clear policy listed and it should absolutely be just common sense that trustees should not be manipulating other outside pages and not identifying themselves as behind the scenes. So that's where I think overhauling the ethics code really may come into play. But I understand everything that you're saying and I agree, you're, you're absolutely on point, but there yeah. definitely is also other ways to encourage conversation because this board has developed a brand of being my way or the highway and being very sneaky and very devious only because they've gotten caught in little things. Right, you know what? You know what? You little talk. mistakes. No, no. This is there opinion. Were probably little mistakes we don't need to always that were rude and, you and, are disrespectful, rude, and you are being to disrespectful to the, to the process. So they I are, thank you for clarifying that, Arlen. Please. I don't understand. And I just think there should be policy. Was it's over. I'm not speaking to you or you. And you I don't should care. Thank You're speaking to everybody. We know you don't care, Ben. You've made that clear. You do not care. You're violating you know. the rules. That's why no one really likes you. Everybody did what you did. Yeah. All right. Wait, what was that last thing you just said? What if everyone just got up and started yelling? At no, what did you No, what did you say, say at the very end of that? About something she did? He said, what if everybody did what you just did? Which That's is what stand up and start talking. Right. 
Out of turn, turn it would right. be chaos. Well, so, why are you afraid that you can't anyway. control right. my control right. solution? Right. Mr. McFarlane, yeah. you have had your time. You're no. right. I apologize. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess um, what I'm going to do right now is just provide a little background just so we can clear the air and any false narratives don't get any traction. Mm -hmm. Um, more than they should, um, because facts matter. Um, and to go back, I can speak on the Tedisco grant. Uh, that was originally issued um, under the uh, Romano administration. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, the original plan was to use little bits of, of the money for upkeep on five of our buildings. Um, that actually never came to fruition. Um, and then when Mayor Woolbright came in, um, he decided that it was going to be used for the pool first, which that they came into mind, and then decided that it was going to be used for repairs on Village Hall um, as a result of aggregating the bid so that he included fixing the facade, the windows, the vaults, and the retaining wall and combining it under one bid, um, what that ended up happening, and then, you know, I'm not sure where he got his information or expertise, but he estimated, I think, $300,000 to do all that work. And as Christine said, it came in at almost three quarters of a million dollars. Um, if that was broken up originally, a piece of those, could have probably been paid for the, with the Tedisco grant and we would have already used it. But those were decisions that were made, um, you know, by former Mayor Wilbrecht. So, um, Romano set of the pool, by the way. Which Romano was right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think he started with the pool and then but the bid didn't come in until later. So, um, we also know that Christine took over when Larry resigned, um, basically in October, November. So she's been doing her best to try to sort that out. Um, but it's one of those strange things where you had a certain size pot of money and you're trying to fit a project to it so that the village doesn't have to come up with a lion's share of the money. And that is basically why that that grant has basically lingered so long and hasn't been pulled yet. Until you can get the right size project, um, it wasn't going to be used. Um, and in regard also to our conversation yesterday, I agree with you that yes, um, I also spoke of alternate, but what I said was my top priority is to make sure that our committees and boards represent the diversity of the village as a top priority. Um, and as I said to you, I said that, that includes ethnicity, gender, and political affiliation. So, um, I just wanted to make that clear because I don't think that was exactly represented in your statement. Um, okay, can I finish that statement too, though? No, I, I, no, I, I stated, not. I, 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 not. I, I stated to you that Kamran is somebody I do want involved and said it to an election night. It's just a question of where to start him, basically, is the question. Kamran is a very good person for this community. I don't deny that. I just want that known as well because that was in that conversation too, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. I can confirm that Frank and I have been discussing that throughout the yeah. entire campaign that we really respect the come on. Mm -hmm. um, so again, to emphasize, our, our complaint is not about him. It's about the skipping of someone very out, you know, qualified. Um, so I hope, I hope to echo Mr. Akulushi, who I've known for gosh forever. I do want to see healing in this community, and right now it is very broken. Mm -hmm. And we all have to take stock as to why. Mm -hmm. All of us, 
Yeah. So let us stop this yeah. stuff. Christine, you and I have always dealt very well and you've always been kind to me. I wish you well stepping off this board. Um, I hope this doesn't to continue to see you, but everyone, everyone in this room, are, we are so tired of this. Mm -hmm. I think everyone's tired of this. So let's, let's move forward and all act with the leadership of wanting to see our community do better. And I'll continue now um, with, in regards to the statement regarding what Ben said and basically laying out the pre-existing agenda that we've had for years now, um, I can attest that Liz and I in 2019 sat down with Jeff and went through all these infrastructure issues and projected dates. And there's a spreadsheet that I'm sure we can share with you. Um, so this has been going on since then. Um, so this is just to make clear so that no false narratives created. Um, these things have been in the works since then. And as much as it seems that, oh, well, you know, we can just do this or take a pot of money and do that. Um, it's a lot more complicated than that. And we shouldn't do anything on any infrastructure until we know what kind of condition it's in and what kind of repair is required. Um, so that is basically what Ben was trying to, to lay out. And, uh, and that is the fruition of years of, of work towards that goal. So um, and that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Go there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sean, thank you. Uh, ben, Liz, do you have anything you want to say in board response? Uh, no, I think uh, everyone said everything that needs to be said. I hope much of what was said about one side can be placed on the other side. It's been both sides. It is not a one-sided issue and it is time to stop. Stop sending surrogates out to criticize and, and you know, find fault on any issue. Just stop it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Everybody? Now I'm going to speak. Okay. Um, just a couple of things. First, I'm going to take um, the um, one thing about this Tedesco grant. Uh, one of the things that Gina mentioned is I what I stated today is what I as what I know. Okay, has happened um, up to date. What Gina mentioned here about how Frank is trying to work with Tedesco, but we're going to lose that grant. That is something that I do not know, uh, which is why I didn't state it. Um, and I have to say that if Frank knows, and I don't know as mayor, he is exceeding his authority. I just want to say that. Your administrator next, has the email. Next, to don't even. next, yeah. next, all right? This is my time, okay? Don't accuse me of something like that. That is honestly libelous. Or, uh, you get to accuse people and people right, listen. Please, could I just, could I, since this is going to be my last meeting, could I please just have my, say what I need to say? Okay, the other thing that I will say about Mr. Uh, Black, I think the thing that I find most offensive is the comment about me having a meltdown. I have to tell you, I have a 45 year working career as a professional woman. I have negotiated collective bargaining agreements. I have been, I've had jobs as big as this. I do not melt down. It doesn't happen. <laughs> and anybody who believes that, anybody who knows me knows that that doesn't happen. So let me just tell you what happened. And I wanna tell you also that I have in my hand the um, Ballston Spa and uh, Trustee Baskin 
alluded to this. The Boston Spa Committee on the Arts voted on, and this is voted, this was approved, this is their charge on August 12th, uh, 19, 2019. And it talks about what the Committee on the Arts was supposed to do and how they were supposed to um, approve things, including item four, explore ways to increase and diversify revenues for the fund for the arts, all applications, e.g. grants to be approved by the board, okay? Solicitations and other external public communications must be approved by the mayor. Then there is also the fund for the arts, which all of which I have circulated today, which came out on 21020, which is which was adopted by the board about how the um, funding for arts projects was supposed to flow. Um, so everything that I have done, I have done in accordance with the law, okay, and with with what our rules are. And let me just give you a little background on the appointment that I had with Mr. Black. First of all, he made the appointment and the appointment was set for 9.30 on um, March 18th. And it was set up as, or Mr. Black requested it. it. Well, he didn't actually request it, he demanded it. And he also demanded that the attorney be present for this meeting. And it was the ongoing issue that he has had with with certain members of the Committee on the Arts and yeah, his violation of his violation, violation, supposed violation of his First Amendment rights. I set up the appointment for 9:30 on March 18th, but that was the meet, that was this that was the agenda for the meeting. On the 17th um, of March, um, Mr. Black showed up in Village Hall. I was not there, so he had to go home. I sent him at the end of the day a email saying that I would not meet with him. I couldn't meet with him because I was very involved with the um, uh, with the budget and with other things. He sent me back an email after that um, saying that he refused to accept that, that he was going to come in and um, you know, he needed to see me. And at that point he said he had something in terms of the Committee on the Arts. He showed up the next morning, I walked out, I said to him, Mark, I sent you an email telling you that I had canceled this meeting. And he also said, you've known about the budget, you've known about this, you're meeting with me, okay? Um, so I walked out and I said, he came in and I walked out and I said, Mark, um, I'm not gonna meet with you. And he said, well, I have something that you need to sign. And I said, Mark, I'm not gonna take that. And I turned around and I walked away. I had notified him, okay? At that time, members of the staff told him what he already knew, which was that any material that had to be approved by the board, um, that the, any grants application had to be approved by the board. He was told there then by a staff member. Um, he then went to, um, Scott Ostrand. So later in the day on, well, this is on the 22nd now at 217, I get a let, I get a call from Scott Ostrander who says he's he's think he's going to sign this art application and I should sign it. And he whether he thought about it or whether he thought about it as pressure, I experienced it as being pressured by another public official to do something which is in clear violation of our procedures and um, our code. So um, I did not, you know, succumb to that pressure. So, and Mr. Black, by his own admission, waited to give this, um, to give this uh, application to us. So I just also, and maybe um, our attorney, this has all been gone back and forth with our attorney, can also attest to the fact that I have followed procedures. So, but, so Mr. Black has said that he held the application. He came in, he is not, in my opinion, characterizing our meeting as the way it has happened. Um, he was advised at that point, once again, of what he was supposed to do, which he already knew. And then he proceeded to um, go to Scott Ostrander, who, you know, once again, began to pressure me. And all of this is to say, 
that what didn't happen was that I did not give in to any of this pressure, nor did I violate our, our codes and procedures. Okay, and do you want to add anything on this? I, I can, if you'd like, Mayor. Um, the, it, it did come to my attention um, that, that the supervisor, Oakrender, had contacted the mayor and had indicated that he was going to sign the document on behalf of the village, to which I said, well, I can't do that. So I contacted the town attorney, the attorney for the town of Milton, uh, spoke with him the following day, maybe the following day. Um, he had spoken with the supervisor, the supervisor said he was not going to sign it. He understood he can't sign it and he can't find the town, the village of Walsh's Buck. Um, it, it did concern me that the supervisor was going to sign something and bind the village. So I just needed to verify with the attorney that that wasn't gonna happen. So I verified with the attorney, the attorney and I spoke, the attorney spoke with the supervisor, and then the attorney and I agreed. Um, you know, he, that, obviously that's, the supervisor wasn't going to sign it. That being said, um, so that, that was just that part of it. Uh, that being said, I did review this. I reviewed the law, you know, 4400 of the village law and what the requirements are for the mayor. I reviewed the uh, Committee on the Arts charge and the fund information. Um, and in my experience working for municipalities and dealing with grants, um, although I have not seen the grant application, my, uh, nine tenths of all grants are either matching or if they're not matching, they are at least reimbursable. Meaning the funds have to be um, put out, expended by the village. Tax funds are expended by the village first. And then you reimburse it and you hope to God that the grant funding people haven't decided to change their ideas and say, I'm sorry, this was on the wrong line and we're not going to give you this money, um, which you know, they, they have other reasons in the past. Um, in, in addition, um, as, as the mayor indicated, you, the village board is required to give the mayor authorization to sign any grant application. It's not only in the carpentry, or, I'm sorry, the arts uh, charge. Um, I could almost, I don't want to say, I, mean, I can almost guarantee that the grant application itself, if you were doing it as a municipality, and if the municipality is the only one who can sign it, then that you have to attach the resolution from the board giving authorization to sign it. And the point to that is, it, it gives you in grant writing, it gives you more points because it shows the municipality is behind it. If anybody else signs it, um, it's not valid. So that being said, I agree that the mayor did what she was supposed to do through the process. Um, my understanding is this grant application from the Mellon Foundation um, was uh, announced on January 12th. Uh, so um, there are grants that are announced you know, today, you have to work on it tomorrow and there are mechanisms to do that. Um, this was not one of those grants, uh, just from my uh, research into this. Uh, so I do think that the mayor did um, what the mayor properly followed the law and properly followed the procedure as to how to deal with this. Um, you know, that's really from a legal perspective. I take no position either way. I, I don't, I just, I, I have no dog in the fight. It's going to be my, what I say. But from a legal perspective, the mayor did what was correct in this case. Okay, and with, thank you. And with that, I just, just a couple more things. Um, first of all, I wanna thank, um, I wanna thank um, my colleagues um, on this board, uh, who, uh, Sean Raymond, Ben Baskin, Liz Cormos, Noah Shaw before them, Larry Woolbright. Um, it has been a, um, it has been an honor to serve with every one of them, all of them with a, um, we all, you know, we all love this village, many times differing opinions on how we should serve it, but in all instances, I believe that is uh, very, very sincerely felt. And it is also um, an honor to serve with people who are so intelligent and um, proactive. I also want to thank um, the village staff who, aside from all of this stuff, <laughs> comes to work every day and does their job and does it uh, to the best of their ability. 
and has in every instance that they have worked with me throw, being thrown into the soup, if you will, um, in every way has assisted me in every way that they could for me to be successful and in order to serve the village. I also want to thank all of you people who all everybody who has said very, very um, kind things about me. I very much appreciate it. Um, you've been very supportive and I want to I want um, to thank everybody who did come out and vote. And um, I think that is a very, very important um, process for all of us to be involved in. As um, many of you know, uh, you know, there are a couple of things I think about when I, when I sit through these meetings. I would like to say I, it has been an honor. Well, it has been an honor and I'll say that. I would also like to say that it has been very interesting, very challenging. I would like to say that it's been a pleasure, but it hasn't. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think that there are reasons for that. I was raised, as many of you have heard, and you're very tired to hear it probably, but I, this is my time, so I'm going to say it. Um, I was raised in a very large, noisy Irish family. Irish American family, and my father was a New York City uh, policeman for 35 years. So um, he had one of the things that he always said was where there's motion, there's friction. I cannot tell you how often I heard that. I used to drive, I used to make, you know, one of these things where your parents say it and you sit there and go, you know, does he have to say that again? All right, there has been a lot of motion in this village since 2017. Okay, um, and where there is motion, there is friction. But a couple of things. I think we have to right size ourselves. We have to bring down, you know, I ask myself all the time, how a woman who hates drama as much as I do, and if you knew me better personally, you would know I hate drama. In my personal, I just hate it. And how does a woman who hates drama as much as I do get into this situation? Okay, just I guess a sense of responsibility, a sense of uh, the same person, people who raised me um, also encouraged me about good citizenship, constantly on good citizenship. But we have to right size ourselves. This is a village, this is not Ukraine. Okay, we are not being invaded by the town of Milton. We have to realize that this is a village. We are supposedly the village of friends, that our problems are have been made by us and by time, and that we can solve them. But the only way we can solve them is with um, if we all work together. Okay. Now there has been a lot said and a lot wrong on both sides. And I think we all have to do better okay and if you're sitting there saying to yourself oh well it's not me it's really them it's not me it's not that you should have been it well as elder cleaver would say if you're not part of the solution you're part of the problem mm -hmm. um so with that i would just say thank you again thank you for um allowing me to serve it has been an experience, and we all um, grow by our experiences. I certainly know that I have, and I hope um, that you, all of you have and will um, going forward. And again, I can't thank you all enough for um, your support and your patience. Okay, and with that, I will end, and I'm going to make a motion that vouchers number 22-00546 to 22-0196 to 22-0196 be audited and the meeting adjourned at 9.38 p.m. May I have a motion? <laughs> motion made by Trustee Raymond. May I have a second, please? Second made by uh, Trustee Baskin. All in favor say aye. Aye.